Can't wait to see the comment section on this one. Today we're going to be looking at a post build review of the brand new Magic Factory M2A2 ODS SA Ukrainian version. Magic Factory is a brand new company, they've been out for about a year now, and they've released a few kits such as that well received Corsair. As a post build review, this is essentially a kit review where I've actually already built the thing, so I can talk about any issues that arise, overlay some relevant video for difficult parts, and this is more helpful, in my opinion, than just looking at how nicely the parts are molded on the sprues. Before we begin, a big thank you to Lightspeed Global. Lightspeed Global is the Canadian and otherwise North American distributor for Magic Factory and a bunch of other model kit companies and also paints and products and stuff like that. So big thank you to those guys for supplying me with this kit for a review. Additionally, Clayton over from Workbench Hobbies uh, will be releasing his own build video on this exact same kit but in a slightly different configuration. So you should check that out for a second opinion on any comments I have on this build. As always, before we go through the build process, I want to point out any modifications or otherwise emissions on the build right now. You'll notice that the wheels and the fenders at the front are, are not attached, that's just separate for painting. To accurately model the Ukrainian variant, I left off five parts. That is the mesh over this site right here next to the driver. I left off the GPS box on top of the gunner integrated sight unit up here. That's essentially a tray in which there is a GPS thing, which I think is a Blue Force tracker. I'm not exactly too familiar. Uh, the Ukrainian vehicles usually just have this tray empty without this guy right here. Uh, though the B-Fist I've actually seen has this whole unit not present. I think it's located on the rear actually. And so there's just the four studs right there. Additionally on the rear, I left off two corrugated armor panels that go on these rear stowage bins and a cable reel right here. Again, those are not present on the Ukrainian in-service version. Now I made a few other changes to model a different variant, which is the Beefist, the Bradley fire support team. You probably noticed right away, this big, well, I guess it's some kind of laser designator essentially, uh, right here replacing the tow missile launcher. That is a 3D printed assembly from Model Monkey. It's very nicely printed and uh, nicely detailed. A little bit of cleanup to do on the support structure, but that's pretty standard for 3D prints. Additionally, to model the Beefist variant, I used a couple of parts that are actually included in the kit but not used because they're relevant for a different boxing. That is the extended rear lights, so I had to yank off the ones I put on mistakenly for the standard variant and put on these guys. And I've also mounted a secondary antenna here that is, again, included, not used, but it's relevant for the Beefist variant. So overall, out of the box, this kit doesn't really require any aftermarket. As I pointed out, the only things I changed for historical accuracy towards the standard variant were things I just had to leave off. The addition of this is for a different variant of the kit because I can never build something out of the box, right? The kit comes in a very impressively sized box, which is a little bit intimidating, but honestly, this kit isn't incredibly complicated or full of an unreasonable amount of parts. It's just I think a pretty large vehicle, so it needs a bigger box. Additionally, this kit is an excellent example of how 3D printing is relevant to our hobby, because essentially Magic Factory had tooled up an M2A4 Bradley, which is the current production version in, in the US today. And when they were all tooled up and ready to go, uh, the earlier M2A2 variant was released in Ukraine, and they were able to simply backdate their A4 to an A2 by including two small 3D printed rafts for the relevant parts because it would take many months to tool up injection molding for the sprues essentially, uh, but they can just 3D print a couple of parts in no time at all. And then this kit was released when this variant is still relevant today. The parts in the kit are beautifully molded with some of the best anti-slip texture I've ever seen included in a kit. Additionally, the welds are already molded around where you'll be locating things like tool clamps and other parts. So the super detailers don't really have much work to do, honestly. And it's very nice to have all that included right out of the box. A great example of the excellent engineering in this kit is the drive sprockets. They've done what I love to see, and they've molded the sprue gates on the edge of the teeth, not on the point. This way, when you do the sanding, it doesn't require reshaping of the profile of the tooth. The wheels include separate rims, 
which you might think, oh, I can just leave these separate for painting the rubber. Well, not quite, because part of that rim is actually part of the metal tire. They just had them separately molded for a rebated rim detail. There's actually a mask included in the kit, photo which part. So what I've done is I've actually glued the, the rim on, uh, and then I'm just gonna, you know, mask it, paint it like that. Now I did the suspension at the very end because I'm posing it for a diorama, but you would do it at this point in the instructions now. It has a nicely keyed system, so if you're doing it on a straight base, uh, the swing arm should pose nicely for you there. Though I had to do some modification of the shock absorbers and such to make it conform to a diorama plan I have. Additionally, the tracks are the link and length system, which I think is an all right compromise. Personally, I think that this kit would deserve individual link tracks, but that's just me. Uh, these require some cleanup as usual with link and length because the molded lengths and individual links in a few spots usually have ejector pin marks on them which is unfortunate but what can you do right and these tracks are actually molded very fine and i was able to simply bend them to get them to conform to my suspension which is actually impressive next up you'll build the hull which is molded as one large assembly onto which you assemble some small sub assemblies which are usually just little panels that have the anti-slip on them as well as a few details here and there. Though honestly, uh, most of the details that can be molded on without sacrifice of detail are. The only parts they're having you put on are parts that would end up mushy otherwise, and this helps to contribute towards the relatively quick build of this kit. Like I said before, it's not complicated at all. One little detail improvement I did here was to drill out the head of the ax with the pickaxe here where it would slot onto the wooden handle. The kit includes a lot of photo etch, which can be a little bit intimidating, but most of it is simply a ton of buckles that you'll only mount if you don't put on the brat armor, which is this panel on the sides of the hull there. Otherwise, the photo etch is mainly just a bunch of little mesh grills and a few other details, which I think is good. Not overwhelming, but no sacrifice in detail. Additionally, the photo etch is the laminated style, which I really like. So you can peel off the outer layer of lamination. And then when you're cutting the photo etch out of the fret, there's no chance it's gonna ping away because it's actually still stuck to the back piece of, of laminate. Another nice uh, touch is that all of that <laughs> larger photo etch sheet, essentially there's no attachment between the part and the fret. So there's no cleanup required, which is excellent. Next up, you'll move on to assembling the brat armor and the side panels here, which requires a little bit of modification depending on which variant you're doing. Uh, you'll have to drill holes either way, but for example, if you're doing the brat armor, you have to cut off some bolts on the rear, which is not too hard. And I've actually, if you can see, I've uh, actually remounted them on the inside of the panel where there's a missing bolt detail. If you look at the photo in the instructions where they show the holes being drilled, it doesn't actually match up with where the holes are supposed to be drilled. They're a little bit higher up, but simply go off of the witness pre-drilled little nubbins on the inside of the panels, and then your holes will be in the right spot. Just go with that. Don't look at the exact position in the instructions. The brat armor itself is molded in large sections with excellent detail, so the cleanup is very straightforward, and uh, there's no sacrifice in terms of the quality of the molding. Additionally, if you glue it carefully, you can have the entire brat armor panel separate for painting because usually they're a different color than the actual base side panel on the vehicle. With the hull completed, you'll then move on to the assembly of the turret, which is much like the hull in that it's largely molded as one part with a bunch of panels onto which you'll glue a little bit of detail here and there. And it also has nicely molded anti-slip detail. I did encounter an issue here and really the only issue on the entire build that frustrated me slightly was the attachment between the axle of the mantlet's rotation and the coaxial machine gun which is almost like a separate little side mantlet. Uh, the attachment between those two has essentially no contact surface. The, the axle itself is too short, it's too weak. E even with CA it didn't work. So currently I have the coaxial machine gun separate for painting but you'll basically have to just glue that in place. You can't have it workable as you can the rest of the mantlet, as well as this uh, sighting system for the, uh, the gun here. This actually articulates so you can kind of play around with it if you want. 
Currently mine's glued in place though. The turret is where the 3D printed parts included in the build are used. The 3D printed parts are very easy to clean up. Uh, you just have to cut off the uh, support material and then sand it up like you would any other part. There is no issues with uh, layer lines or anything like that. They're beautifully printed and you just tack them on with some CA and it's just like any other part in the kit. The only area where you had to do a modification essentially to fix un unused parts from the previous boxing is the rear panel of the turret where you have to fill a couple of holes. Uh, not a big deal, but I'm not sure why they didn't also include this panel like they did the side panels over here that have to be replaced for this variant. For some reason they just decided to make you fix that part yourself. And that's pretty much it. This kit goes together surprisingly quickly. Now I have been singing the praises of this kit for sure, but I did have a few other points of contention to bring up. Nothing major, but uh, essentially the instructions I think uh, could have been improved slightly. A few steps have very small pictures, which even for me as a young guy can be a little frustrating. Uh, a lot of modern companies are going this way with smaller and smaller instruction steps. And while the steps weren't confusing in the number of parts going together, smaller steps make it sometimes ambiguous as to where a part is supposed to be located. Additionally, the symbology in the instructions was confusing because the symbol that they've chosen to represent a part going on both sides is the symbol that every other manufacturer uses for an optional part. So it takes a little while for you to kind of see that part and not think optional. You're supposed to put it on both sides and that's just a, a weird decision but not exactly a big deal. And also the instructions completely forget to tell you to put on the frontal brat armor panel right here. When they get around to putting on the side panels they tell you it's an option for whichever variant you want to do. Uh, bare sides with the buckles or brat armor, but they forget to tell you to put on the front armor. I think stemming from the fact that this kit was, like I said, a last minute, almost rush job based on the previous kit. So you'll see a few spots in the instructions that says like three and one, which this kit is not, but the previous one was. So kind of like those annoying dragon instructions. Uh, I think in one or two spots in this kit, there was some of that coming out where a previous edition of the instructions was contributing towards some confusion with a new variant not being properly explained. And lastly, there were more pin marks to clean up than I would expect with a modern company. Besides the tracks, which is unavoidable for link and length, a number of parts, maybe about 15 or so, had a pin mark to clean up. Just like a few panels and hinges and stuff like that required more cleanup than would be generally expected. Additionally, there's also a few pin marks that were like sunken pin marks on the inside of the side armor panels, which you can actually see if you don't clean them up. Like there's some evidence of sanding one right there. There's a few along the tops of the side panels, uh, maybe about eight total. Those required filling and sanding, uh, but not a big deal. I'm really impressed with this kit and I do recommend it. It was very enjoyable to build and much more detailed than the Orochi Bradley I built a few years ago. Despite a few points of contention, I absolutely love this thing and I'm looking forward to building the M10 Booker for Magic Factory. And uh, you can also build this as a not Ukrainian variant, but I will. Hopefully I don't get canceled. <laughs> It'll be fun to do the cool digital camouflage for sure. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, post them on below. I always read through them all, and I do recommend you go check out Clayton's video for his opinion on the same build. He might have some additional issues that I didn't come up with. If you like my work, you can support me on Patreon with the link on screen now. The guys over there who give me a little bit of money every month really help me making these videos for my channel. As always, I will see you guys next time. Until then, stay safe and happy modeling. See ya.